Hey, this is Lance from LangChain. We've been doing a set of videos on more advanced land graph concepts, and I want to talk today about editing or updating the graph state. So if you have a graph, you actually can edit the state at any point in that graph manually. And I want to talk about how to do that and why that's interesting. So this just shows a diagram of what we're talking about here. So imagine I have two nodes, step one and step two. There's a particular state value foo, and it has bar and baz. Now I can update from bar to baz manually, you know, using any kind of intervention that I want. Uh, and this can be done at any point in your graph. Now, what's a practical use case for this? Let me show you an example of, uh, for example, when an LLM formulates a tool call, there can be a lot of different mistakes. So for example, an LLM can produce the wrong payload. So in this like toy example, you know, the user asks, what is step three if I pass two to it? And the tool is, of course, you know, step two. Um, and, you know, it has some formulation. You bind that to the LLM as a tool. And you get the payload, but, of course, the argument is four, and it should be three. Okay, so the payload's wrong in this case. Um, or, for example, the step name could be wrong. So, again, the tool that you want to call is two, and the LLM says three. So you could have, for example, a check that looks at the payload after a tool call and corrects it before you actually call the tool. Right. So that's like a one practical example of how you might modify the state of a graph during during operation and particularly uh, for agents that involve tool calling. <laughs> now, this falls in the broader category of human in the loop features within line graph. So we talked about breakpoints. So that is the ability to stop execution of a graph at a certain node. We talked about waiting for user input where you can basically assign a certain node um, of input provided by a user. And now this is like a, best, a more general way to edit the graph state at any point in time that builds on those two other ideas. Now it also uses, utilizes two ideas we already talked about, which is checkpoints and threads. So basically, as your graph runs, let's say you run step one, then step two, a checkpointer allows you to save the state at each of those steps. So I basically can save the state as well as the next node I'm going to go to and so forth. And this is all rolled up into a thread. Now this is interesting because if I stop my graph, and I want to edit in some way, with this thread, I can pick up where I left off. So I basically can stop my graph, I can make an edit, and then I can reinitiate the graph, and if I pass the thread ID, it just picks up where it left off with the new state I just edited. So that's a really nice kind of feature. Now let's actually show a practical example. I'm going to copy this over. I have an empty notebook here. Um, and so this is a super simple graph with three steps, just in sequential order, okay? Um, now, I added this interruption before step two. So what I expect is I'm going to proceed up to step two, and then I'm going to stop. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, run that to see that in play here. Good. Cool. So I've just passed an input. I've created a thread, basically passed my thread ID, and I kick it off. Now the graph runs, and it just runs step one. It stops before step two, just as I set my breakpoint right here. Cool. So what we can do is this is pretty nice. Let's just go ahead and all we're gonna do is we're gonna get the graph state before, right? As after we've stopped. So let's get the current graph state, we'll print it out. And I'm gonna call this graph.update state. Now this is just gonna update the state of the graph. I can specify which particular value I wanna update. So in this case, I wanna use basically, if you look at back at our state, it has a single key of input. I can update the value of that key to hello universe from hello world and there we go. So the current state was hello world. I've now updated it. Now it's hello universe. Now, one thing you'll notice is that um, if I go ahead and run from this point, again, I pass my thread ID, I invoke with nothing because basically I can pick up where I left off. You'll see it goes on to steps two and three. So this state update actually got applied to node one. So basically I stopped before two. That means I'd run one. I do the state update. Now the state update is then by default, but applied to that first node, it's done. And then I go to nodes two and three. There's a lot of nice flexibility that's built in here and I definitely encourage you to experiment with it. Thanks.